Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorella Show. This is Jack Benedict, and we're going to talk IUP Crimson Hawks football after the win over Mercyhurst on Hall of Fame days. And keep on rolling, and the challenges keep coming. Coach, first of all, continuing a solid performance, and once again, this is good stuff. Fast start for you. You got it going. Well, obviously, and we say it every week, we're making a point of that, and uh, we're up 14 nothing after the first, 14-0 after the first quarter. Uh, early in the game, had a nice drive. Lenny made a great run. We hit a post, uh, got a three and out on defense, and then put another drive together. And, uh, you know, if we could leave every first quarter at the end of the quarter up 14 nothing, we'd take it. Yeah, absolutely. Great catch by uh, Dom McNeil, too. Right. Lunging catch from Lenny. That was fabulous, wasn't it? Yeah, he. Uh, we thought we'd have the post off the play action. That corner's really good for uh, Mercyhurst, uh, Norwood, or Redwood, number Redwood. one. And uh, we went after him actually on the post, and we were fortunate that, that Dom beat him and he made a great catch. But that, that kid's a really good corner. You know, the defenses, uh, opposition's defenses, you're going to have to – I'm sure they're doing this anyway, focusing on Lenny because he's proving that um, he's back to where he was as far as running the ball. I know you've had, you, you know, you've been handling it in different ways. Uh, that was a great run, as you mentioned. That stiff arm, and you know, you wonder how he got in there for the touchdown. That was a tremendous run, and then he had two or three uh, scrambles where he made first downs. That uh, you know, I don't know how he made it. The one on their sideline, you know, when it started, he he needed to get about ten yards at least, and it, it didn't look like he was going to get And he outran everybody to the sticks and got out of bounds, and then they hit him out of bounds, actually. So he not only got the first down, but we got 15 yards added on it. But the, the run that he scores the touchdown on, he probably shouldn't even have bounced it. He should have kept it up inside uh, and followed his poor, but he, he bounced it outside and, you know, he made a great run and turned the corner and then cut back. So – it's one of those where, well, you could have stayed inside, but you scored the touchdown. So, you know, do what you see, I guess. Yeah, do it. Exactly. Yeah, Lenny was a leading rusher with 62 yards. He accounted for 255 yards passing and running. You brought up the point, and we talk about uh, trying to get all angles. Offensive line, uh, you know, uh, you didn't give up any sacks to measurable sacks from that right. standpoint. you got some young guys up there. And tell me about Daryl Davis, a redshirt freshman that's had to fill in for a veteran in Joe Peterson. He's played great. I mean, uh, he got our offensive player of the game uh, from the coaches this week. Uh, you wouldn't even know we have a new left tackle in there. That That's usually – when you play left tackle at any level, if you don't – hear about him, then he's playing great. Because if he's not playing very well, you're getting sacked uh, on the backside of a right-handed quarterback. And he's been great in the run game. He's been great in the pass game. Um, and as a redshirt freshman, I don't think you could play any better than he's played here since uh, Joe went down. Yeah. I think uh, Coach Campy would probably tell you, you know, we'd like to have more bodies and you'd mention Absolutely. it too. But you're, you're able to rotate some of those guys with Doberman and so on, bring Esposito in when you need it. But that versatility, you just can't beat that, can you? Well, no. I mean, and we, we've gotten in a, a formation where we've made Doberman the tight end and brought Rocco in to play guard. Uh, to give us a little bit more beef with Watts being out at, at tight end and, you know, taking a little bit of pressure off the two true freshmen that played the other tight ends. So uh, that gave us a boost. This we, we had been working on it and hadn't really put it in uh, in the game plan until this week against Mercyhurst. But we got two or three really good runs out of that with Dauberman at tight end and Rocco at guard. Mm -hmm. You think Watts will be back this week? I don't know about Watts. We're hoping Peterson will be. Uh, We'll have to see on Watts. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're talking pretty young at that tight end with a. a They're true all freshmen. freshmen. Yes. Yeah, freshmen. Yeah, exactly. Let's go defensive side, and uh, Damon Lloyd is just uh, you know I know you speak highly of him and why not? He's a great football player, and I, I like what he said. And I, I like the thought process that well, we give up yards, but we don't want to give up points. Right. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes if you don't give up big plays and you give up a lot of yards, you keep the point total down, that's really what matters. Uh, then there's other times where you might think you're playing pretty good, but they hit two or three big plays and score 21 points, well, that's not very good. So uh, 
our guys, especially the older guys, Lloyd's been here three years. Most of our older players understand that the bottom line is, you know, to keep the other team from scoring. Let's talk about a defensive line. Anthony Leonard has had to mold the interior guys. You have the two great ends. Dylan Scott, we've talked about defensive player of the game for us and for you guys. Six tackles, one and a half sacks, one and a half tackle for loss. And he was the guy that blocked the field goal, wasn't he? Absolutely. It's his time to shine. He's been in the program. He's played. Now he's a senior. He's a starter. He played a great game. Uh, Ronye Mitchell, great play force in the fumble on the, the, the play at the end of the half that led to our last touchdown before halftime. Our ends have been playing great. Uh, Anthony Leonard is big-time defensive line coach. I mean, the guy does a great job uh, substituting his guys. Uh, Technique-wise, they play hard. They're consistent. Uh, it, the, the guy's a great coach. Well, he's had to have a, a, a more challenging job this year because he lost the two guys inside. Absolutely. Yeah. And who were very good players. But, you know, Dylan is starting to come on. Uh, Shockley has showed some things at moments. And it was great to see Ronye. I mean, you got a guy 6'5", 310 pounds in there. Uh, when he gets it going – and gets his motor running, he can be really good. And he, he made a great play for us in a fumble there at the end of the yeah. half. What was the story on uh, Dylan Scott coming out of high school? Uh, you know, we, we hear about so many of the other right. players. Well, what's been his back? Well, he, he's only, he's, you know, we say six foot, but he might not even be six foot tall. So those are the type of D linemen like the uh, Ayub Dale who's hurt, who probably end up red shirting for us from Easton. At our level, we can get really good defensive linemen who aren't real tall, you know, the six foot, even six one or less, and they may be as good as a six three, six four D lineman, but those guys are going to the division ones are going to uh, take those guys. So we have a chance to get uh, guys like Lloyd. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of other guys in the program like that that are sure. only six one, six foot, but really good defensive linemen, interior deep down linemen, where the height for us doesn't really matter as much. Uh, you know, the two guys that we do have in there, the young guys, Mitchell and Fisher, they're 6'5 they're and 6'2, but Fisher's got really long arms. He, he's got arms like he's 6'5. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit of a different mold. Mm -hmm. They're more like what the Division I guys go after. And then the Dylan Scotts and the other guys we've had, they're only six foot tall. No matter how good they are, they're not going to get recruited by Division I schools. But you said last year, and you have it on the offensive line, where you do have height there. Well, we, we obviously two or three years ago decided to get a lot bigger. And usually if you get bigger, that, that means getting taller Tall. also. So we, we have uh, that length that you need. You know, like a Daryl Davis, he's got really long arms. Uh, he may be 6'2 or 6'3, but he's got long arms like a 6'6 guy. So uh, that length is very important, especially at the tackle positions. Yeah. Tell us about uh, – the run by Nico. Nico Ruiz out of punt formation. It's fourth and almost two. It's an interesting story. Well, the way this works is is uh, if we make an alert, we have an alert call that if we get the look that we got, we're going to run a fake punt. Now, we don't – you know, we didn't even have the alert in, I don't think, at, at any game this year because we weren't – we hadn't seen the look we need to, mm -hmm. to run it from previous film studies. So, this week we did have the look. Uh, we had we had got stopped on third down. It was fourth and two. I believe we threw a pass to Grant Smith over the middle, maybe, or I can't quite remember. But we were two yards short of the first down. And Coach Barker over the phone said, "Should we go with the alert?" And it was a great suggestion by him. And I said, "Yeah, because you know if they give us the look, we're probably going to get it. And if they don't give us the look, we're going to punt anyway." Mm -hmm. So uh, when we went out there. Coach Barker said, well, there's the look. He's going he's gonna to call it. And it, Damon Lloyd helps with the call on that. And uh, to be honest with you, if we even get close to the look, they're going to run it. You know? And Nico's <laughs> got no fear. I mean, we really don't want him lowering his shoulder when he's getting ready to get tackled like that. But it actually showed a little bit of physicality. And uh, it was so uh, clean that we actually probably could have got one, of our t one or two of our lead blockers downfield on their return guys that made the tackle. They mm -hmm. just secured the front, and they really didn't need to. That's how clean it was. We wow. caught them in a return where they're, they're pretty good on punt return. They won a game because of punt return. And when you have two guys deep, 
that you're a little vulnerable to the fake. And they were working a wall return to the side of where we faked it. Mm -hmm. And all of their guys were trying to take our guys down in. And that was great for us because we were trying to do the same thing to them. <laughs> and I think Shaq Jones, our end, had his guy all the way on the other side of the line of scrimmage over by the, the end on the other side. So uh, we got the perfect look and we executed it and he does a good job. And it wasn't a great snap. It was on the ground, actually. It was, yeah, it was a short hop. It was a short hop. So he had to short hop but not get his knee on the ground, obviously field it. And then once he ran, there was nobody out there. Yeah, great play. Uh, I like these numbers. 16 penalties, IUP, opposition 30. So you've got to like what you, you know, four a game, that's not bad. No, I mean, there's certain penalties you're going to get. Uh, we don't like the pre snap penalties. We had one Saturday, but what happened w w was we were going into a hurry situation and our linemen were down, and then we didn't like the look we had, so we went to check the play and we look over to get the play, and by this time, our Don got linemen are in a stance for over 20 seconds, and you get a little jumpy. It's hard to stay in a stance that long, and, yeah. and we, that was the one procedure penalty we had. Uh, we had an interference call that got washed off because uh, they had had a penalty, and we had a defensive holding that was probably a good – it was a good call, but it wasn't a very smart decision on our end. But if we can get 30, you know – 30 yards or less a week in penalties, we'll take it. Yeah. Okay, California, Cole Bowl, all that sort of thing. It's been tough to win at Cal. They've got a freshman quarterback, Noah Mitchell. Tell us about him. And, they, of course, they lost their first two, but now they've won two. Well, yes, they, they very easily could be 4-0. The first two games they lost, you know, it comes down to the last five minutes of the game, uh, and they have the ball. So they, they had a chance to beat Kutztown on the road. They had a chance to beat uh, – Ohio Dominican on the road, both teams are very good. I think Ohio Dominican has one loss. Uh, Kutztown is undefeated. Right. Uh, they went to uh, Shippensburg and, and put it on them, and the game was over by halftime. And then they had a barn burner at home against Edinburgh, you know, high-scoring game, a lot of turnovers, a lot of big plays. Uh, so they're a 2-2 two and two team that very easily could be 4-0. Right now, looking at our schedule, they'll be as talented as anybody we play the rest of the year on our schedule. Uh, the quarterback is a, a freshman, but he's actually a year older because he went to a prep school, 6'4". Mm -hmm. uh, has the pedigree size-wise. Uh, they throw the ball a lot. He's been very successful. He has thrown some interceptions. Uh, they're really good at wide out. Um, and defensively, they'll, they'll blitz and cause problems for you on that end. But, uh, you know, they're – just like a regular Cal team, it's just that they're playing a quarterback. For, it's his first year playing, but he, he's really good, though. Yeah. Well, I noticed, um, you know, that they are a passing team. You mentioned about the interceptions. They've got nine touchdown passes, nine interceptions. Right. They have a new running back, too, Nelson Brown. Tell us about him. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a transfer from Lenore Ryan, where Mike Keller, the former Cal coach, was at as yeah. the head coach. So I'm sure there was a tie there. And uh, he's very productive. You, you kind of tend to forget about them because they throw the ball so much. Well, then that's when you run into problems, when you just keep continuing to play the pass and worry about the pass, he'll he'll break some runs on you. And he, he's, you know, has – I think he was second team all-conference in that league uh, with Lenore Ryan. So, he has pedigree also. So, uh, you got to stop the pass, but if you're not stopping the run, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Well, uh, all in all, it's a short trip for our fans. It was a great crowd, wasn't it? Um, it awesome. It was, I mean, it's it's been like that since we've taken over. I mean, this year, great crowd. Millersville game. Uh, Saturday, great crowd. We, we need to get that kind of crowd to travel down to Cal for us and almost give us the home field advantage. Uh, uh, with it being an hour and 15-minute drive, maybe we'll get that. This will be a big game, uh, a tough game a team that's uh, very talented. So uh, if we could get a lot of people to come down to Cal, it, it would be great. Yeah, sounds like uh, Cole Bowl, IUP Cal to me. A absolutely. <laughs> Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. Kickoff, 6 o'clock. The Cole Bowl at Cal, IUP and Cal. That's all we need to say. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. We'll see you at California.